The year 2020 has special significance for those of us working in optometry. A clear 2020 vision is something we hope to provide to our patients. A clear 2020 vision is something we hope to provide to our association. I have some thoughts about how we can use hindsight to create a clear 2020 vision to shape our future. Before I do, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you to all those who have served and continue to serve our great profession. Thank you to our newest members. Thank you to the young ODs, the corporate affiliates, and those who work in a referral practice or those who work in private practice. You all deserve our heartfelt thanks. This is an exciting time for optometry, and I don't take it lightly that you've elected me to serve as your president. I plan on doing everything I can to grow and support our profession in every way. Quotes often help us to communicate our thoughts. Here are some quotes that doctors of optometry can relate to. I don't plan on becoming certified since I don't plan on using this. I don't feel comfortable using this in my practice. Or it won't pay me enough to do this since I'm happy practicing the way I currently do. Many of us have heard these phrases every time the GOA battles an expansion for our scope of practice. But these weren't only quotes in the debate about our recent ejections bill. No, some of you heard these quotes when they were spoken decades ago. They could be remarks about the diagnostic drops of the 80s, the therapeutics of the 90s, or even the oral medications battle of the 2000s. And I'm sure that many of you remember people who chose to not become certified to use therapeutics because they were comfortable practicing the way that they currently do. Maybe they didn't want to take that 100 hours worth of coursework. Where are those people today? How many of our colleagues are not certified to dilate? How many of our colleagues are not certified to write a prescription for Tobradex or Timolol or others? In optometry, we find so many divisions. Divisions between those who agreed with using our resources for obtaining injections and those who did not. Divisions between those who thought we should have board certification and those who did not. And yes, I'll say it, the age-old division of corporate-affiliated optometrists and the rest. In life, two people raising two different homes with two different age groups will rarely see eye to eye and want the exact same outcome or goals. They are different people with different desires. But that doesn't mean they can't come together and be as one, just like in a marriage. Divisions aside, I'm very confident that every one of our colleagues goes to work on a daily basis, ready to help their patients. The GOA is here to help support you in doing that, not to make things more difficult or divisive. As president, I commit that our board will do everything we can, not only to educate you, but to encourage and lead you to be the best that you can be as an optometrist. If you ask the presidents of the past, people like Dr. Zadeh, Ben Casella, John Whitlow, and last but definitely not least, Mr. Brian Markowitz. How did they sleep during those difficult days? They would tell you they slept like a baby. They woke up every two hours thought they were having a bad dream. I want us to use those quotes to not only inspire us, but to remind us Remind us that not too long ago, we were confined to not being able to treat our patients in the way that we should be, the way that they wanted to be, and the way that we are trained to currently are accustomed to doing. To remind us that while we may not feel comfortable or even find it beneficial to treat patients with every mechanism available to us, the profession is evolving. And I want to pause on this for a second. I told you that I was going to share some quotes Famous football coach Lou Holtz said that after his house was destroyed by a fire and he lost everything, he had been retired for some time and he realized, he told his wife, you have three days to mourn and we get back up, we dust ourselves off and we get back at it. Holtz had retired and realized that he wasn't tired of coaching, he was tired of maintaining. His inspirational lesson is, if you're not growing, you're dying. 
professional growth is made possible by professional associations. Why? Because there's value of being part of an entity bigger than yourself. An association is a group that shares common objectives, whether they be academically, athletically, financially, or geographically. Why do you come together when you're in competition? It's because we can all make the group stronger when we work together against other groups, like the ones that fight optometry. We as members of the GOA need to support this growth. Dr. Whitlow and his buddy, Mr. Valines, remind us often that we are a legislative profession. Let your guard down and you can have it all taken away faster than you got it. In order to ever consider moving forward with an expansion of the scope of practice in the future, we need to show that we, as a profession, are able to utilize what we are currently allowed to use. While it's only been a short period of time, right now, as I speak, we have a minority number of licensed optometrists here in Georgia who are certified to provide injections. We need to change that, and it's up to you. If you are not injectable certified, work towards that goal. It's not only urgent for you as a practitioner, but also important for the profession. Remember your individual action reflects on the entire profession. We need to help the public appreciate us as medical professionals. The GOA has done a wonderful job through our public relations consultant, Dan Curran, and getting the great message out about what we do as a profession. However, we as optometrists need to do more to help those efforts. This year, I'll challenge our PR team to help you by highlighting a different eye issue each month. Glaucoma Awareness Month, Sjogren's Awareness Month, Women's Eye Health. These are all good examples. People need to constantly be reminded about eye health care and the need to see their optometrist for a yearly comprehensive eye exam. That's been the goal of how an optometrist changed my life. Unfortunately, even though we get plenty of warning and the tools to help them, members have not been doing their part to participate. Why are you not proud that you helped change the life of a patient? Why is the GOA office not flooded with letters on a monthly basis to notify us of how well we treat our patients? We have all had something like a retinal tear, a Holland horse plaque, or a crazy cataract. Recently, we fought through three pediatric ophthalmologists in my practice to get cataract surgery on a six-year-old girl who was a minus eight, minus three. Yes, we do change lives. Don't keep it to yourself. The GOA is doing more now for more of us than ever before. Do you have a third party issue? Do you have a legislative issue? Are you a young OD looking to network with others? A corporate affiliate optometrist looking to connect? The GOA can help. You get the drift as to the enormity of the work that goes on at the GOA. My final major goal is probably the same as every president who has served this great association. We need to get more people involved in making us great. Will you commit to serving on a committee? Will you lobby at the state capitol? Will you write an item for the five at five? Will you introduce a prospective member? We will only continue to grow and evolve with you, with your help, with your vision. As I begin my term, I want to say thanks to some special people and colleagues. Dr. Chris Hobson was the president of the GOA during my senior year when I visited for the 100th anniversary of the GOA in Savannah. He and George Ann Beard made me feel so welcome that I wanted to come to the meeting over and over. I'd like to thank Drs. Zadeh, McElroy, Deal, Whitlow, Brandenburg who have always been there to lend an ear and give guidance when needed. I must also thank Dr. Dan Tolman. If it were not for him, I would not be involved in the GOA. And most importantly, I want to thank my family. My mother and father raised me to be strong enough to stand on my own two feet and possess the values that I can be proud of. And my wife and mother and my wonderful and amazing son. Last but not least, my best friend and little buddy Zach. 
who each day gives me the strength to create a future that will be good for him and be a father he'll be proud of. I told you I appreciate quotes. In 1908, President Teddy Roosevelt said that every man or woman owes a part of his time and money to the business or industry in which he is engaged. No man or woman has the right to withhold support from an organization working on his or her behalf. Remember that the next time you receive an email from the GOA asking for you to visit with a state representative or to contribute to the PAC or to pay your dues. In closing, I'll say that passion is having something you are trying to accomplish. I'm passionate about using our past in hindsight to shape our future of one unified optometry with a clear vision for 2020 and beyond. Thank you.